Well, it's mid-November here now, and my project took a little longer, it's taking a little longer, than uh, I had anticipated. Well, anyway, it's functional and it's in operation right now, so I thought I'd show you some of the progress that I've made and, and uh, how, it's, uh, how it's looking. So first, let me talk about the solar panels. Let me grab the camera and show you. Okay, now, there are two sets of solar panels. There's one there. And there's another one there. And uh, you can see that little switch right there. Now that's a double double pull, double throw switch. It's got uh, plenty of amperage. It's not really the kind you really want to use for solar applications because uh, you can get arcing and things like that, but I'll have to be careful with it and uh, it'll probably work. These uh, panels are supposed to put out spec at 290 watts each. There's 10 of them. So that would give you 2,900 watts. Now with efficiencies and so forth, you know, you're not going to get 2,900 watts. But I'm getting pretty, fairly close to that. And let me go inside and show you. Well, first of all, let's walk up here. As you can see, the line goes down there. And it goes up and over here. And it's buried. And it comes up right here in my power room. Now you can see I've got a little cleanup to do, but it's cold outside right now, and I don't want to do, do much out here. But, but you can see there it comes up, and I've still got to bury that. It goes over there and into the pump room. So let's go in there next and show you how, how that's working right now. Okay, so let's step inside the, what I call the pump room now, and uh, See how things are. Now, right here at the door, there's there are two water heaters. There's this one. I think I've mentioned this before. This is a propane water heater, and is, at the moment it's not running, and it's just uh, here as a backup in case uh, the electrics can't keep up. And right now they can't. Now this is an electric water heater here, and as you can see, it is fed over here through this. Now that, what, what this is, this is overflow from my solar system. You can see I've got water heater from solar regulator written it on that uh, plate. And what that means is in my solar system in the house, when I produce too much power rather than sending it up the grid, this is one of the places it's dumped automatically. Now you can probably hear a squealing. Let me see if it can be quiet. If you can hear that, that's the water heater running. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how much flow rate's going through here, but you can see the two thermometers. So let's see if we can get this way. Yeah, see? In the water is uh, 72.7, and coming out is 78.8. So it's got about a six degree rise in water temperature as it flows through here, going in here and out there. So this is being, this is water in the system. And these are the tanks here, the original tanks that's being heated by solar, excess solar power that I have. So let's go around here and um, we'll look at the other. Now this is one tank and then there's another tank here. That's, so these are 500 gallons a piece. So that's a thousand gallons there and there's the pumping apparatus back there. And then back there, that little hole in the wall with the pipes going through it, that goes, uh, some of that goes into the radiant heating system inside the house. And right there is a concrete wall that's the foundation wall of the house. So this is a lean-to build onto the house. Now, this is that new tank that I built, uh, an 1,100 or 1,000 gallon tank. And as you can see, I've trimmed off a lot of that excess uh, plastic. And then this is the overflow from it. And I just measured the flow rate. This water is flowing through here at roughly uh, 110 to 120 gallons an hour. So that's the flow rate that we're getting here. Now, let's go over here. Now this tank is full. Uh, this, this tank is completely full. Is, uh, and I've got to do better insulation up there. As a matter of fact, I've got to insulate this room. A lot better than it is, but it's nearly nearly done. And it's 34 degrees outside right now. 
and it's as you can see 60 degrees in here so that's not too bad just from the ambient heat now here's this other water heater let's talk about it this is another one that I have set up to run totally off the uh, solar power that we just saw outside now I've rewired this thing and I don't know if some of you are techies but usually water heaters have two units built into them. There are 4,500 watt units if you have 240 volts. And they're built so that one comes on and if it gets colder, the other one comes on too. So the whole water heater can run 8,000 watts or about 85, 9,000 watts nearly by itself. They generally don't do that, but that's they're built to do that if they have to. Now, I've got this wired to the solar that's coming out and you can see there's the line showed you on the outside and that's the hot solar coming in right there and you can see how many amps I've got right now I've got 10 amps and the voltage that's coming off of that see it's reading about uh, 245 volts and uh, so 245 volts times 10 amps that gives you about 2400 2500 watts depending on how accurately you're reading the meter so there's about 2,500 watts. Now these lights here are just here, a bunch of them in series, to give me a visual indication that, hey, this is hot. You know, <laughs> don't be messing with the uh, DC because the DC power is hot. Anyway, so now we look at this, and you can see that right now, see the, I don't know if you can see the, ter the thermometer. The, let's see, inside it's going 72.9 uh, and coming out. 77.2 now you can do the figuring if you want but that's a hundred let's just say for rough conservative numbers a hundred uh, gallons an hour and water is about eight so eight thousand eight hundred pounds an hour so eight hundred pounds an hour and we're getting oh let's call it uh, five degrees just for round numbers five degrees so if you go five degrees at eight hundred pounds an hour, so five times eight is four thousand. This is roughly doing four thousand BTUs an hour into the system. Now that's not bad. It's recovering heat. This is totally solar. So what that means is, as the system recirculates back down through here, comes out here, it's dumping into that tank. As you can see, that little line coming down, and that's this tank. And then it's overflowing into that tank and then it comes out here on this side and flows down to that tank so that's where our solar is uh, feeding our system right now and it seems to be doing good it's not as good as I'd hoped but it is working now let's go out in the greenhouse and show you where this heat is going okay so let's go out of the pump room Close the door, and we'll go over to the greenhouse. And the, these lines up here are uh, where the uh, water is going. And some of it goes over to here in this greenhouse, and some of it goes over to here. It doesn't do anything in that one right now, but it does something here. So let me open this door. That I, and here we are now. Right now, I don't know if you can read that. But it says it's 70, uh, 81 degrees in here right now, and it got down to 36 last night. Actually, outside it got down to uh, 15 degrees. That's Fahrenheit, of course. Now you hear that little noise. You can see those are tomatoes. They're doing really good. Uh, now, if you turn over here, there is my heater. Now, this is what keeps this greenhouse from freezing at night. And it's not enough, uh, I've got to uh, do better than that, but it's so far not bad. Anyway, let's go look at the temperatures in this one. Now, as you can see here, there's N is coming, it's 80 degrees, 80 and a half degrees, and 80.3 out. So you can see this is not varying in temperature too much. And that's because the uh, temperature of the uh, water coming in is not far off from what the temperature is in here. As a matter of fact, uh, looking again, what did it say it was? It said it was 81 degrees. 
So, you know, there you go right now. So there, it's not exchanging a lot of heat right now because the air temperature is pretty close to what the water temperature is. One thing that I uh, discovered is that if the water temperature is cooler than the air temperature in here, this thing starts to reverse. In other words, it starts to heat up the water from the heat in here and put it into the system. So right now during the day I keep it running. So if it gets up to 80 degrees in here, then uh, about there is the point where it starts to heat things up. But that's another story. Anyway, yeah, anyway, here we go. See, there's the tomatoes. It's uh, and keep in mind that it got down to let me see, 36 degrees in here, and outside it was 15 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. Okay, I just wanted to show you how uh, this operates in real time, in real weather. Look at the thermometers here right now. As you can see, it's 67 going out and 82 going in. We'll work out the math on that a little bit later. But if you remember, there's about 100 gallons per hour flowing through this. So, uh, we're uh, pumping out a lot of heat out of this thing right now. and. Uh, Right now the temperature in the greenhouse is 46 degrees and it's about 20 degrees outside. Overnight last night it got down to uh, I think about 10 degrees outside and it says here it got, it got down to 36 degrees in here with that heater running.